What's up everybody, Hayden here from Alarm System Store again. And today we're gonna to be adding some wireless zones to our DSC Neo. Uh, today we have just a few different wireless sensors and I'm just gonna be showing you the enrollment process for all of those. I also have a wireless keypad that I'm gonna be showing as well. And basically this system can be set up as a completely wireless system, like all your sensors, all your keypads, the whole bit. The only thing that would have to be wired were is any modules um, or communicators. Uh, other than that, the Neo can be completely wire free. Um, so I'm just going to show you the enrollment process and then we're going to show a little bit about uh, some attributes that you can change for wireless devices. Uh, most people won't mess with that. It's mainly for enabling auxiliary contacts on certain devices. But uh, anyway, let's jump over to it and I'll uh, show you how it's done. All right, so here we are at the Neo and we're going to be enrolling some wireless devices today. So what I'm going to do is go through and explain what everything is and then we'll start programming. So first off here, we got the Neo HS2 LCD RF keypad. And this is the regular keypad with a wireless transceiver built into it. Now, for those of you that need a standalone wireless transceiver, for the Neo, the HSM2 host is the standalone wireless transceiver. Now, typically it is more economical to go with the keypad with the built-in transceiver. But if you need your wireless located in a more central location, or you're using all touch screens, or you're just adding wireless to an existing system that already has some older keypads, using that host is an option. And over here, we have a PG9945 door sensor. Here we have the PG9922 wireless glass break sensor. And here we have the wireless ceiling motion sensor and that is the PG9862. And here we have the PG9936, which is the wireless smoke and heat detector. And last but not least, we have a wireless keypad that I'm also going to be enrolling as well. So first things first, whenever we need to add new zones or wireless devices, we have to go into programming. So our first step is going to be star eight, five, 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 five. And then we're gonna to go to section eight, zero, four. So our very first option under 804 is enroll device. So first thing we're gonna do is enroll the device and that is how we connect it to the system and then it will walk us through more programming from there. Now, on most sensors, there are multiple ways to enroll them. If you can see, the little button here is the enrollment button. So we're gonna hold that for a couple seconds. And this is not foolproof. Sometimes it does not read the sensor but if it does, it will pop up just like that and ask you to confirm it. Now, what it means by confirm ID is on the side here. And one of these stickers will be on any device and it will have an ID number. The ID number for this is 101-101-4445. So that is correct. So we hit star, and it's going to ask you to enter the zone number. Now, in theory, this system can be a completely wireless system. So if we wanted to add this to zone one, we could do that. Typically, if you have any hardwired devices, you leave that block of eight available. So let's say we had zones one through six hardwired. Now, in theory, you could add the first wireless device to zone seven. But since you're already using some hardwired, you don't want to limit yourself by taking away those last two zones of your hardwired setup. So you would start on zone nine. Now, since we are simulating, making this a completely wireless system, we are gonna put this on zone one. So type in 001, and it's gonna ask you for the zone definition. So for door sensors, they're pretty simple. You have delay one, delay two, and instant. 
These first three zones are going to be for door sensors. Now, we're going to make this a delay one since that's our only door sensor here. It's going to ask you to select a partition. Now, it's going to have partition one already marked as yes. If you want to add it to multiple partitions, you can do that. We're only going to leave it on one because we're not doing a partitioning video yet. And then it will ask you to program the label for it. Now, normally this would say zone one, but alpha programming on the Neo is very simple. It's like that the old cell phones where you hit one and it goes through A, B, C, one, and then you get two is D, E, F, two, and so on. So if you scroll left and right, it changes where the indicator is, and if you hit zero, it deletes the number there. So we're just going to leave this as one. That way we know it's zone one. Hit star, and it will bring up the word entry option, or the ASC2 entry. These are additional methods of adding labels to your zones, but we aren't going to mess with those. I will explain those in a later video. So for now, we're going to hit pound. And now that a device is enrolled, it's going to go to enroll now so that we can add more devices. So this glass break sensor that we have is brand new, just out of the box. It still has a little plastic tab. So what we're going to do is this is another method of auto enrolling. If you pull this tab and engage the device, it's going to start turning on. And it should pick up the sensor. Now, like I said, this is not foolproof, so that is why they give you multiple ways of adding these devices. So we can open this up and try the enroll button, little red button in here, and see if that works. And that one did work. So we double check our ID. So our ID here is 161-4620, so that is correct. So hit star, and again, it's going to go through those four steps after you enroll the device. So we're going to make this 002, since that's our second zone. And for a wireless glass break sensor, you can have multiple different setups. Personally, I like to set mine on interior stay away. If you would like it as interior, interior stay away sets it so that the interior stay it is going to be off and in away mode it is going to be on. Now you can also use an instant, but that means anytime the system is armed, it is going to go off. Typically, if you have a glass break sensor in like a kitchen or a garage, then you don't want it set as an instant because anytime the system is armed and you happen to drop something or if it gets overloaded with sound, it's going to set off that glass break. And that is why I prefer the interior stay away zone. So I'm going to set it as a 005, interior stay away. It's going to ask partition assignment, hit pound. It's going to ask for the program label. Now this is where we can type in you know, if we wanted to type in glass break, we could do that. And then once we are done, you can hit pound and accept. And it's going to go back to enroll now. So now we can go to our next device. And you will do this for every wireless device that you have. And again, this one's got the little pull tab that's keeping the battery from being engaged. So we're going to try this again. Hopefully this one works. And that time it picked it up. So we got to confirm the ID. 127-7253. It's correct. So we'll put that back. Hit star. Now we enter our zone number. We're going to make it zone three. And for motion, you can set it as Instant, interior, interior stay away, delay stay away. 
So we're going to pretend for this scenario that this motion sensor is right inside that door or is in another area of the home where we would like a delay on entry. So we're going to hit star on delay stay away. And what that's going to do is it's going to use delay time one. So anytime this is tripped while the system is armed in away mode, it will start the delay timer. Partition assignment, partition one, yes. Hit pound, program label. We're just going to leave it as zone three. Now it's going to go to the next device. So for smokes, these have three AAA batteries that come with them. And just make sure you put them in the correct way. A little picture here shows you how the batteries go in. So they all go facing the same direction. So we got to confirm the ID. The ID is located right here underneath the batteries. 2024723. It's correct. So now we enter zone number for our smoke. So we're going to make that 004. Select zone definition. So for a, a smoke detector, you want it set as a 008. That is a standard fire. Now the other option is a 007, which is a delayed fire. Basically just meaning it adds a delay between when the system is going to go into alarm because of a fire trouble. Now there is also an auto verify fire. And what this does is it waits for a second smoke detector to be activated before it sets off the fire alarm. Basically, if there's a fire in the kitchen, it's not going to set off this alarm because this one smoke detector went off. It's going to wait for a second smoke detector to pick up smoke so that it verifies there is a legitimate fire. For now, though, we're just going to set it as a 008 standard fire. Partition assignment, one. Program label, we're going to leave it as zone four. Now we can add our keypad. So on wireless keypads, you have four AA batteries that power it. So stick those in. It is going to power up. Put the little cover on the back. So there's a couple different ways of enrolling keypads. Typically, they will pop up and say hold one and star to enroll. So we'll hold those buttons. It says waiting for confirmation. So confirm ID 3783449. So we check on the back here 3783449. And we confirm the ID for that keypad. Now you get to enter the keypad number. So this is obviously going to be keypad number one. Let's say you got pre-programming from us and you wanted a completely wireless system. We would set this as keypad one. And then on down the line, we would add keypads in sequence. So 002, hit star. You can select the partition that this keypad is going to be assigned to. So you scroll through, click the one that you want. We're going to leave it on partition one. Hit star. Now you can name the keypad just like with the other devices. We're going to leave it as keypad 2. And now this wireless keypad is enrolled. So now everything that this main keypad can do, this wireless keypad can do as well. So we're going to go ahead and back out of programming. Now we have open zones. And we're going to have some tampers because I don't have this put back together. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so now that we got all the backs put on for our smokes and our motion, and I screwed in the, the cover to the door sensor, all our troubles went away. Our zones are good. So if we open this first one, it's going to show an open zone, zone one. And if we set off the motion sensor, it's probably gone into swing or shutdown now since it's been activated so many times. 
but that is wireless programming on a Neo. Now, just real quick to show you that this wireless keypad is capable of everything that this one is. I'm gonna turn this on. Just hit any button, it's gonna bring up the, uh, the display. So, like I said, we can do everything on this keypad. So if we wanted to go into programming, hit star eight, five, 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 and it's gonna bring up the same programming menu as the regular keypads. The system is available as an all wireless system. So as you can see, wireless enrollment on the Neo is fairly simple. Now I'm gonna show you those attributes that I was talking about. These are basically just some options that can be changed for each wireless zone. Most of them are just turning on and off the supervision for that device. Um, the main ones you're gonna to wanna to look at, if you need to, is the auxiliary contacts on the 9945. Uh, that is the door contact that comes with the auxiliary wired input, if you so choose it. Um, but yeah, I'll show you where those are at in the programming menu, and then uh, we'll get out of here. All right, so for those additional settings, guys, you're gonna go into installer programming, star eight, five, 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 five. And then we're gonna to go to 804 again. Now, Rather than enroll another device, we're going to scroll over to whatever zone that we wish. You can also type in the zone number, but we're going to check zone 1, which is that 9945 door contact. And this is the one with the auxiliary input on it. So these are the individual settings for that. You can turn on and off the LED, the read switch, which is what the magnet actuates. The external input is where you would turn on that auxiliary contact, and it has supervision. And if we scroll over, on the previous menu, we get zone EOL. Now that is only for the auxiliary contact wired to that device. So 99% of the time you're not gonna mess with this stuff, but I wanted to show you where it was at just in case. Now if we go to like zone two, which is the glass break, it's only gonna give us the supervision option, so we can turn on and off whether it's supervised. If we want to go check the motion sensor, zone three, Check device toggles, you can turn on and off the LED, and it's got supervision also. There's nothing else. If we click more options, there's nothing else under there. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of additional settings for each wireless device. I just wanted to show you guys where those were at. They're mainly for the contacts like the 9945 that have the additional auxiliary contact available. But I wanted to show you guys where those were at just in case you do need them. And that's it for the Neo wireless programming. It's all very simple, guys. Once you get the enrollment done, it literally walks you through everything you need to do to get your zone set up. The only thing that you would have to ever change is maybe partitioning, if that's what you were doing. And uh, like I said in the previous video, we're going to be doing partitioning here soon. Uh, but it is quite a lengthy process, and there's a lot of details to it. So don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Um, otherwise... I'm going to get out of here. Uh, please like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know how we did. If you have any suggestions for videos, please leave them down below. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say, and we would like to put out videos specifically for you guys. So whatever you need from us, just let us know, and we will make it happen. All right. Catch you on the next one.